10 is actually a combination of module 9 and module 10. Okay, which is in module 9, you will learn about the introduction of the C programming. And while module 10 is how to make, a, how to do a program for input output using the C programming. Okay, so module 10 is a combination, module 9 that module so close. So we will uh, from this module onward, kamu akan belajar macam mana nak uh, menggunakan C programming. Okay, macam mana untuk uh, program menggunakan C C language. Okay, so let's look at this module uh, 10. Okay, so kenapa C? Why C? Okay, so the reason for writing in C C programming instead of assembly language is first easier and less time consuming. Okay, so C C programming is more easier compared to assembly language, which is for example lah. Okay, if you're going to put a data to your port B by using a C programming, okay, so you just simply write port B sama dengan F8. For example, you're going to put F8 ke port B. So you simply write port B equal to F8. But using the uh, assembly language, okay, you need to of two line of instruction. First, you need to load this F8 ke you, you punya GPR. Once you done that, then after that, you can set out to your port B. Okay, for example, Load I R sixty O X F lapan and then barulah out port B R sixteen. Okay, means that this one here you need two line of instruction, but this C programming only need to have one line of instruction. Okay, C is easier to modify and update. Okay, and of course, lah. Okay, uh, see the way we we'll write the program is more easy to understand. It's understandable compared to assembly language, unless you already know the, all the mnemonics. Okay, then you 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 can understand lah after what uh, the assembly language trying to do. Okay, if not, see if you don't have any uh, background of programming. C is easier to understand compared to assembly language. Okay, can use code available in function libraries. Okay, in C programming, we have a function libraries. We have a function that will simplify our programming. Okay, if you have that function, you just simply call that function and use it. Okay, instead of assembly language, in order to do a certain function, you need to write down the whole program. Okay, kamu, contohlah kamu, kalau kamu nak buat bahagi. Dalam assembly language, kita tak ada uh, instruction untuk bahagi. So, you need to to have a, a program so that that program can run a bahagi. It's for C language, okay, you can use the function in Mac, uh, uh, the function or the library, okay, which is called a Mac library in order to do the Bahagi. Okay, so it is the actually use a C language compared to assembly and C code is portable to an other microcontroller with a little or no modification because C language is a high level language. Also, it is easy to to apa ni kita panggil to move from one microcontroller to one microcontroller. Contohlah kalau kamu ada Arduino, okay, kamu, kamu guna AVR. And then, the same code you want to use in Arduino. Okay, by using a C language, you can use the same code and apply it to Arduino. But if you use an assembly language, the assembly language for AVR is different compared to the assembly language in Arduino. Means that you need to do modification before you apply it to Arduino microcontroller. So that is the the benefit why we going why we need to learn C programming. 
Okay, so let's look at the MPRC data type. Okay, in C language, there are a few data types yang kamu kena tahu. Okay, one of the data types here is, okay, this data type will determine what are the site of bit that you're going to use. For example here, for unsigned char, okay, every time you see the word char here, okay, it belongs to 8-bit data. Okay, kalau charger, it is a 8-bit data. Okay, if unsigned, means that it is an unsigned number. Okay, all of the bit here is a represented by a positive number, which is the data range can be from 0 to 255. If you put a chart, means that this is a signed chart. Okay, signed number. Okay, since it is 8-bit, okay, come on, the 8-bit, Okay, this bit here will represent the sign number. Okay, the bit to you I can represent sign number. If one means that it's a negative number, if zero, it is a positive number. Okay, contoh kalau kamu ada satu, 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 satu. So, this is belong to negative one, two, eight. Okay, kalau kamu pakai unsigned chart, one, 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 one. one. So this is actually two five five. So the the things here is nila do better lah. Either you use a, as an unsigned or sign number. Okay, for INT. Okay, so INT is a sixteen bit white. Ah, uh, the number bit. Okay, so you can either choose as an unsigned or sign number. For unsigned, this sixteen bit can be from zero to sixty five thousand five hundred thirty five. Okay, while if it, it is a sign number, so it can be from negative 30,738 and to 32,767. Okay, and then if you use a long, okay, means that it's a 32-bit data. Okay, it can be either unsigned long or signed long. Okay, for the unsigned long, the value can be from zero until this number, while Sign long can be from this negative, this number here to positive, this number. And then we have a float and double for 40 point. Okay. If you use a float or double, means that you're going to use a 40 point. Okay. Nombor per puluhan. Other than that, semua pakai nombor bulan. So, this is MVR, C data type that you need to know. Okay. Usually, for Art Mega 32, we only focus on this 8-bit. Kenapa 8-bit? Because our Art Mega 32 is 8-bit size. Okay, so kita hanya focus pada char. Okay, the data type that we going to use is char, which is, is consists of 8-bit data. <coughs> okay, so unsigned char is a 8-bit data type that take the value from 0 to 255 or 00, 0 to FF. Okay, so this is a most widely used data type in MBR. Okay, selalunya kita akan gunakan unsigned char. So in many situations, okay, which is if you're going to setting a counter value, okay, better use the unsigned char rather than signed char. Kenapa? Sebab counter selalunya adalah nombor positif. Okay, better we use the unsigned rather than signed number. Okay, so remember, in a C compiler, use the sign chart as a default unless we put the keyword unsigned in front of the chart. Okay, for example, kalau kamu tulis macam ni, chart. <coughs> okay, char Z, contohlah. Okay, so this Z here is actually a unsigned chart. Oh, sorry, sign chart. Because by default, in C compiler, Okay, anything is, if you not put the unsigned dekat depan ni, means that it's a belong to sign number. Okay, so if you're going to uh, initialize or define this Z here, have a sign, unsigned number, so you need to put the unsigned at the front of the chart. Okay, the data size here. Okay, for example, kat sini, okay. Write a uh, VLC program to send value poisson poisson to FF to port B. Okay, so macam mana nak tulis? 
Okey, mula-mula sama juga. Sebelum ni kita ada hash dot include m to 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 def dot inc. Okey, so in C programming, this dot include m to to def dot inc. Yang ni yang kita selalu tengok lah dan bila kita tulis assembly language is replaced by hashtag include avr slash io dot cache. Okay, these two things here is same thing lah. Di mana kamu nak include uh, the same file which is that file have a io register name. Okay, instead of you need to to tahu dia punya io addresses, you only need to know the register name. Okay, so we can use a register name after we include this file here. Okay, and then, so this is the main program, int main void. Okay, so this is where you're going to start your main program. Okay, so inside of this main program, so this is where you're going to write down your program lah. Okay, so this is first, okay, you declare unsigned child z, means that this z variable here, okay, become an unsigned number. Okay, you de derive it as an unsigned number, as a 8-bit unsigned number, okay, because the child here. And then DDRP sama dengan OXFF. Okay, what this instruction do? DDRP sama dengan OXFF. Okay, recall back. So every sebelum ni DDRX. Okay, what we will we'll do in DDRX? This DDRX is actually to determine either our kita nak make sure make our port as an input port or output port. Okay, if you put on zero, kalau kita letak kosong, maksudnya kita jangan nak jadikan dia sebagai input. If we put one, we we going to make it as a output port. Okay. In this case here, you see DDRB sama dengan OXFF. Actually, this one here, this sama dengan dengan ni je. Kalau in assembly, actually it's a similar to LDI R16 OXFF out DDRB R16. Di mana kamu nak letak FF ke dalam DDRB. So what we're going to do now? Okay, so by, okay, according to this, uh, lines here okay this instruction here okay what you're going to do here is you're going to make your port b as output port okay kenapa output sebab you you put the ff to your ddrb so ff is actually one 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 okay and then you put this value here to your ddrb so you know that now you know that the whole port b now you make it as a output port. So that's why lah DDRB equal to OXFF, you know that this one here you're going to initialize your port B as a output port. And then now for, okay, you see here this for Z equal to 0, Z less equal to 255 and Z plus plus. So this one you're going to do a for loop. Okay, this is actually a for loop. Di mana for loop ni, kamu nak bu buat dia Sebanyak berapa kali? 255 kali. Okay. And then pada masa yang sama, port B sama dengan Z. So, what happens here is, every time your Z increase, it will send out to your port B. So, setiap kali Z kamu start daripada kosong, and then it go to kosong satu, kosong dua, sampailah FF. Okay, kamu akan send kepada port B untuk display. So, this is port B equal to Z. This is actually, kalau kita tulis dalam <coughs> assembly language, is actually something like this lah. Okay. Uh, okay, so this one here. Z ni, let's lah. Z ni is our GPR. Okay, so let Z is R17. Okay, equal is our Z. So what happened here is port B sama dengan Z is actually out port B R17. 
17. Di mana value daripada R17 which is your Z kamu hantar kepada port B. Sama juga dengan this instruction. So this is what we written in C programming. Okay, in order to set up value from 0, 0 to FF kepada port B. Okay, so in C programming kamu nampak this is your this one here we call it as a curly bracket and then each of the instruction here, each line of the code kena kena, kena ada semicolon. Okay, kalau tidak kalau kamu lupa this semicolon here what happened is nanti akan ada syntax error. Okay, so sometimes, okay, this written zero, sometimes kamu nak tulis pun boleh, kalau tak nak tulis pun boleh. Okay, so this written zero is actually to return from main function. Okay, to let the programmer know that our programming is successfully running. So, bila successfully running, dia akan bagi value kosong. So, tak perlu tulis pun, tak per this part here. Okay, only on this part. <coughs> Okay, so that, that is for the unsigned charm. Macam mana kita nak define supaya kita punya variable Z tadi okay, adalah merupakan 8-bit data untuk positif number. So, what about if we going to make our variable as a negative number? So, to make uh, our variable as a negative number, then we need to use a sign charm lah. Okay, so the sign chart is a 8-bit data type that use the MSB, okay, which is your bit 7, to represent either it is a positive or negative value. Macam yang saya kata tadi, kamu ada 8-bit data. Contoh, this is your 8-bit data. Okay, so this bit 7 ni akan tentukan sama ada it is a positive number or negative number. So, when this one is 1, so you know that this is a negative number. So what happened here is you need to convert this value to second complement then baru kamu dapat dia punya magnitude. If kat sini adalah kosong, so you know that this is belong to positive number then you just take this number here as your magnitude. No need to convert to second complement. Okay, so those only 7 bit for the magnitude of the sign number giving us value from negative 218 to 174. So, this is become your magnitude. 7 bit dia akan menentukan sama aja jika kamu punya value ataupun magnitude of your number. Okay, so remember against the C compiler use the sign char as a default. Okay, if you just tulis char Ali, for example. So, Ali ni actually is a sign number. Okay, you going to make a Ali as a sign 8-bit number. Okay, to make a Ali as an unsigned 8-bit number, so you need to tambahlah kat depan ni. Unsigned char Ali. <coughs> okay, example. Can I just make it bigger so that you can see it clearly? Okay, write an MVRC program to send value negative 4 to positive 4 to port B. Okay, so now it involves positive and negative number. So, what are you going to do? Okay, so macam biasalah. Mula-mula, kita include dulu kita punya file MVR slash IO dot H. Okay, this, this is a standard MVR header. Yang ni kamu kena selalu include lah. Okay, sometimes it will give you marks kat sini. Kalau kamu tak tahu pun nak tulis ni, at least kamu tulis kat atas ni pun tak apa. Okay, and then continue with your main program, int main void, open curly bracket and close curly bracket and all of your program is inside of this main program. Okay, so since sekarang ni kita nak send negative 4 hingga positive 4 to port B. Okay, so nampak ni? char my num. Okay, char my num. Okay, so you make your my num ni sebagai 8-bit sign number. Okay, and then kamu ada plot bracket macam ni. Okay, so what this bracket do? Okay, so this bracket is actually <coughs> bagi tahu CPU that your my num here is 
and array number. Okay, kamu simpan nombor dalam dekat variable my name ni dalam bentuk array. Okay, which is that array will be negative 4. Okay, untuk my name kosong. If my name satu, array satu is negative 3. My name 2 is negative 2. Sampailah positif 4. Okay, so kamu ada kosong 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Sampailah 8. So, bila kamu tulis my name bracket 8, so means that you're going to give an output of 4. Kamu nak ambil nombor 4 dalam array my name. So, my name ni is your variable lah. Tapi variable kamu adalah dalam bentuk array. Kenapa array? Sebab kamu ada bracket yang ni. So, that's why kita boleh tulis macam ni. Negative 4, comma, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 sampai positif 4. Okay, then unsigned child that means that you're going to to initialize, define your variable z sebagai unsigned 8-bit data. Okay, and then DDRB OXFF. Okay, you initialize your port B as output. Kenapa nak initialize port B sebagai output? Sebab kamu nak send. Bila kamu nak hantar jadi value ke port B, so automatic port B akan jadi output. So you need to initialize your port B so, so that your port B become output port. Okay, and then kamu buatlah ni. <coughs> kamu punya what we call here, this is a counter. Okay, berapa banyak kali kita nak buat? 8 kali. Kenapa 8 kali? Sebab kita ada 8 value kat sini. Okay, 8 data. 8 numbers starting from 0 sampai 8. Okay, so for Z sama dengan 0, Z equal to or less than 8, Z plus plus. Okay, Z ni lah yang akan jadikan dia kamu punya array. Okay, so port B sama dengan minus Z. Okay, now minus Z. Set sekarang ni sama dengan kosong. So, dia akan hantar negatif 4 dahulu. Okay, and then Z plus plus. Z kosong tambah 1, dia akan jadi 1. So, now port B minus 1. Okay, dia akan hantar negatif 3 sampailah positif 4. Okay, then while 1. Okay, so this one here, you're going to loop it forever. Okay, maksudnya dia akan pusing dekat sini. Sampai bila-bila until you stop your program. Okay, so this, this will stay here forever. <coughs> okay, so this is what happened lah. Okay. When you going to send the negative 4 sampai positive 4 ke port B. Okay, so this is the, the value lah yang akan display dekat port B kamu which is dia akan tunjuk FC which is FC is actually negative 4 FD negative 3 FE untuk negative 2 FF is negative 1 kosong kosong is untuk kosong kosong 1 1 2 3 F 4 ok so yang ni kita dah discuss sebelum ni macam mana nak dapatkan nak represent ok negative number in AVR kita dah buat dah dahulu ok next we have the unsigned INT ok so unsigned INT is a 16 bit data type that take value from 0 to 65,535 which is cos daripada kosong kosong sampai FFFF so in AVR unsigned INT used to define 16 bit variables such as memory address ok sebabnya kita punya memory address is Sampai 085F. So, 085F is actually 2 byte. Okay, which is need to have a 60-bit number. So, you need to declare lah supaya kamu punya memory address adalah dalam bentuk INT. Okay, so since AVR is 8-bit micro C and the INT data type takes 2 byte in randos must avoid use in INT data type unless we have to do. Okay, so most of the time kita akan guna char sahaja. Kenapa? Sebab kita punya AVR adalah 8 bit microcontroller. <coughs> okay, then we have the sign INT. Okay, so tukar yang ni. This sign INT is 
60 bit data type that use the most significant bit diff, the bit limit blast to represent some of the is a positive number or negative number. Those only limit plus bit for the magnitude or sign number give us value from negative 32,768 plus until 32,767. Okay, so if you uh, in the slide is as a sign INT, which is sign 60-bit number, so this is the value that it can represent. Okay, again, okay, kalau kamu tak tulis apa-apa, okay, it is a default, by default is a sign number. Okay, if you're going to, to make it as an unsigned number, so you need to put unsigned dekat depan. Kamu punya data sign. Okay, any question up until here? Okay, we already learned about the data size. Okay, next we're going to look at the logic operation in C. Ada apa-apa soalan tak? Sampai sini. Data size. Any question? Regarding the data size. <coughs> okay, if no question, then we go to the logic operation in C. Okay, so this is the big white operator in C. Okay, for the logic operation in C programming, kita akan ada logical N, logical OR, exclusive OR, and inverter. So how do we know that uh, that symbol is belong to logical N? Logical or exclusive or, or inverter. Kita kena tengok pada symbol ni. Okay, so this N symbol means that you're going to do a logical N. If you look at the, you see the vertical bar symbol here, you know that that is belong to the logical or. Okay, if you see the caret symbol here, this symbol, okay, that belong to exclusive or. If you see the tilde here, this belong to inverter. Okay, so this is your input A, B, and this is the output after you perform the logical function. Okay, for example here, run the following program on your simulator and examine the results. Okay, so you include this file and start your main program, DDRB, OX, FS. What happened here? You're going to make your port B as output. DDRC sama dengan OFS, so again, you're going to make your port C as output. DDRD sama dengan OX, FF, you're going to make your port D as a output. So, this is where you're going to initialize your I.O. port. Sama ada nak jadikan dia sebagai input ke atau output. Okay, ingat kalau input, you send zero. If output, you send one. Okay, now, let's look at this line here. Okay, part B sama dengan OX35 and with OX0F. What you going to do? Okay, you want to do a logical end between this number, 35 dengan 0F and send the result to your part B. Okay, so macam mana nak buat? Okay, tukarlah this 35 dengan OF dalam Binary number dahulu, okay? Kosong, kosong, satu, satu. And lima is zero, one, zero, five. <coughs> and then, zero F is this one here. Okay? And then, why one? You do a logical end by looking at this table here. Okay, you compare je lah. Satu, satu become satu. Kosong, satu is kosong. This satu, kosong. And the rest is kosong. So, the part B akan... Ada value kosong lima. Okay, next port C sama dengan OX kosong empat vertical bar OX 68. So, now you see it, you're going to do the logical or between this number kosong empat dengan enam lapan. So, again, untuk tahu dia punya result, kamu kena tukar this kosong empat ke dalam binary and enam lapan ke dalam. The binary that according to this table here, you get the answers. Okay, and then port D. Okay, so you're going to send a port D with this number. 54 do exclusive or dengan 78. Okay, kamu nak hantar value 54 buat exclusive or dengan 78 and hantar jawapannya kepada port D. 
Okey, again sama jugalah. Okey, tukar dahulu hexa ni kepada binary and by referring to this table here, okey, you compare and get the result and last kali pot B sama dengan tilde OX55. So why punya? You're going to do inverting. Okey. Nombor 55 kamu invert dia dia akan jadi AA. Kenapa AA? Tukar dululah 55 ke dalam hexa eh, binary kamu akan dapat 01 01 01 01 and then after that you invert invert means that 1 jadi 0 0 jadi 1. Okay and then you get A A. <coughs> okay then Y1 okay so it will repeat uh, it will stay here forever and then close curly bracket. Okay so this is the big wise operator in C by using a logic operation. Okay sebelum so ni kita dah pernah belajar in assembly language. Okay kita akan guna A and D. E, O, R and then O, R, O, R, I to perform this logic operation. Okay. And then the contoh. Okay, write an AVRC program to toggle on the big four port B continuously. Okay, the other word continuously without disturbing the rest of the pin of port B. Okay. <coughs> okay, apa maksud toggle? Kamu nak tukar port B. Pin nombor 4. Contohlah port B. Asal-asal port B kamu value dia macam ni. Okay. Contohlah this is the value asal port B kamu. Dia ada satu. Satu, 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 satu. Okay. And then bit nombor empat. Where is your bit nombor empat? Okay. So, this is kosong. Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam, tujuh. Okay. You going to tukar yang ni je. Continuously. Okay. So, what happened here is. Okay. So, this is the first sequence. Dia akan bentuk macam ni. Okay. Bila kamu toggle dia, dia akan jadi. Okay, dia akan jadi kosong. Bit 4 je yang tukar. Yang lain masih maintain. Okay, and then next next next, uh, next turn, bila kamu toggle lagi, dia akan jadi, dia akan dapat semula value yang asal. Okay, you see here, only bit 4 aja yang berubah. So, how to do that? Macam mana nak buat program? Okay, so this is the solution lah. Okay, first, you include avr slash io dot h. Okay, so this is a standard. Okay, so in INT main board, open clear bracket and close clear bracket. Okay, come tulis dulu yang ni. Your main program, open clear bracket, close clear bracket and then after that, baru kita fokus buat yang dalam ini. Okay, and then sebelum kita toggle port B, kita kena identify dulu port B ni. Is it an input or output port? Okay, so in this case here, sebab kita nak toggle. Okay, we're going to toggle. Okay, so the port B must be set as a output port. So that's why the first thing that we need to do here is DDRB sama dengan OXFF. <coughs> okay. Okay, next. What are you going to do next? Okay, what do they get Toggle B4 port B continuously. Okay, dia kata spontaneously. Selama-lamanya. So, kita start with Y loop. Y1. Kenapa Y1? Sebab Y1 ni akan keep repeating forever. Okay, this one ni akan keep doing forever. Okay, so that's why we put all the program to do the toggling inside of this Y1. Okay, so the first one ni you buat macam ni lah. Port B sama dengan port B or okay mula-mula <coughs> okay so what punya is port B sama dengan port B or dengan kosong B kosong kosong satu kosong kosong satu so yang ni kamu nak set bit empat 
while the rest of the speed will remain. Okay, so contohlah asal-asal kuat B kamu sama dengan 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So, this is the initial value of your port B. Okay, then kamu nak all can dia dengan value yang ni. So, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, what happened here? So, kalau kamu tengok sini, bila kamu do a logical, sorry. When you do a logical or, okay, bit 4 kamu setkan dia. While bit lain tak berubah. Okay. So that's why we use this. Kenapa kita tak boleh guna ni? Port B. Pakai je lah tilda. Boleh tak? Tak boleh. Kenapa tak boleh? Kalau kamu pakai tilda, the whole value ni akan bertukar. Sekarang ni kita nak bit 4 je bertukar. Bit lain, value dia remain. So that's why kita pakai logical or untuk kita set and pakai logical and untuk untuk kita clear. Okay, kenapa kita pakai logical and? Okay, contoh this is the value lah lepas kamu dah set and then kamu nak jadikan dia kosong. Nak clearkan bit 4. So, kamu darab dengan ini. Kamu do a logical and with this number. So, what happen? Do logical and yang ni akan jadi 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and with also you will get also and this become okay you see only bit 4 aja yang berubah bit lain tak berubah so this is how you do the toggle process <coughs> okay next okay another example Okay, we have a lot of example in the in this uh, module here. Okay, right. An FRC program to monitor bit 5 of port C. If this bit 5 is high, send normal lima prima to port B. Otherwise, send AA to port B. Okay, so in this in this uh, kind of question here, okay, I advise you to look at lah kamu punya ABR. Okay, so kamu lukis kamu punya ABR. Okay, tak, tak kisahlah walaupun kamu tak tahu kedudukan port C kat mana, port B kat mana. At least kamu lukis and then you put the all the information that you obtain from this question here. Okay. As well as you you put inside of your uh, apa ni? Uh, ABR, lakaran ABR ni okay. Because we going, next we going to use this information to write the program. Okay, so write a MDLC program to monitor bit 5 port C. Okay, so you have a PC5. Okay, this is your bit 5 port C. Kamu nak monitor. Okay, what happens when you going to monitor? Okay, means that this is actually is your input lah. Okay, every time you see the word monitor maksudnya PC5 kamu nak jadikan ini sebagai input. Okay, monitor, input. Send value output. Okay, and then send if PC5 high, okay, kalau dia high, 1, PC5 sama dengan 1, hantar 55 ke port B. And then you have a port B. So, this is your port B. Kat sini, kamu lukislah kat tak kisah pun. Mana-mana pun tak kisah. And this port B here actually is your output. Kenapa output? Because you want to send the data. Okay, so this is a B data. <coughs> okay, kalau satu, hantar lima lima. Kalau kosong, hantar A A. Okay, how then? Kamu dah lukis macam ni. So, you know that. Okay, so this one here, PC5 is a input and this is a output. Now, you can write down your program. Okay, macam mana nak tulis program? Macam biasa lah. Okay, mula-mula start dah dulu dengan hashtag include abr slash io dot hash. Okay, this is the must lah. Okay, every time you use the input output, you then you need to include this file here. Okay, then start with your int main file. 
okay and then open curly bracket and then you put the close curly bracket down here okay so next what you going to do next okay mula-mula kita initialize dulu kita punya input output port okay so you we know that port b as a output port so macam mana nak buat port b as output port so d d r b sama dengan o x f f <coughs> Okay, lepas tu, what about port C? Okay, so since PC5 here is connected to switch. Okay, so why not we make the whole port C as a input port? So you just simply write DDRC sama dengan kosong. So automatic the whole port C akan jadi input port. Okay, and then if you make it as input port, jangan lupa enable the pull up resistor. Macam mana nak enable pull up resistor? Port C sama dengan OX FF. Kenapa nak enable pull up resistor? Kamu cari sendiri. Saya dah bagi tahu sebelum ni. Okay, so this is enable pull up resistor. Okay, lepas tu. Okay, then you, you start with Y1. Okay, sebab yang ni kita nak buat continuously. Kita nak monitor benda ni sepanjang masa. So, Y1. So, open curly bracket and close curly bracket. So, now. Kamu nak check this one. Okay, so you do, you put lah. Uh, uh, if else statement. Okay, so if pin C. <coughs> okay, if pin C You can put something like this Sama dengan, sama dengan Okay Yes, I can get it Okay, if pin C N with kosong B, kosong, kosong, satu, kosong, 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 kosong. Ataupun you can simply put if pin C sama dengan 0 B, 0, 0, 1. Kenapa 0, 0, 1? Sebab bit 5 ni kamu nak check sama ada dia 5, dia high ataupun tak. Okay. So, dia kata kalau high, what happen? If this one is high, then what happen is you send Port B sama dengan OX 55. Okay. Hantar 55 kepada port B. Else. Okay. Which is pin C sama dengan kosong. Else. What happen is port B sama dengan OX AA. Okay. Simple. Macam tu je. Okay. Monitor dulu. Pin C. Pin nombor berapa? Pin nombor lima. Macam mana kamu tahu? Dia is a pin nombor lima. Kira lah. Dia is kosong. Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima. Okay. Check pin C pin nombor lima satu ke kosong. If satu, OX55. If kosong, what happen? Antar OX AA ke port B. <coughs> okay. So, this is for by using the if else statement. Okay, next. Okay, bitwise operator in C by using a shifting. Okay, previously in the assembly language kita dah pernah buat data shifting sama ada kamu nak rotate right, rotate left, arithmetic shift right, arithmetic okay, and then logical shift left, logical shift right. Dekat C programming pun kita ada juga data shifting by using this symbol here. Okay, every time you see this symbol here, you know that you're going to do data shifting. For example, okay, kalau kamu tulis macam ni, kosong B, kosong, kosong, satu, kosong, 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 kanan, kanan, tiga. Maksudnya, kamu nak shift this value here ke kanan berapa kali? Tiga kali. Okay, yang ni nombor asal, nombor asal kamu. Kosong, kosong, satu, kosong, 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 kosong. And then suddenly you put Tiga. Means that kamu nak shift the whole bit here ke kanan berapa kali? Tiga kali. So, kita ambil yang satu lah senang kita nak tengok. Okay. 
Shift ke kanan tiga kali. Satu, dua, tiga. So, kamu akan dapat. This is the final answers. Okay, the rest you just put. Pause. Okay, kalau this one here. Dia kata shift ke key. Okay. The same number. Okay, and then shift to the left. How many times? Three times. Okay, so kamu pun. <coughs> ambil nombor satu ni shift ke kiri tiga kali so the final value will be this value ok and then this one here satu ke kanan tiga kali so yang ni kamu kena tukar dulu lah satu ni this is uh, dalam decimal tukar dalam binary kamu akan dapat kosong 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 satu and then shift ke mana ke kiri tiga kali shift lah satu dua tiga So, kamu akan dapat this value. Okay. This is the data shifting by using the, this symbol. Okay, either you're going to shift to the right ataupun shift to the left. Okay, any question? Okay, we are already finished module 9. Kita dah habis dah module 9. Which is, you already learn about the logic operation, data shifting, If else statement, for loop study, why loops, and data types. Ada soalan tak? Up until here. Before we proceed to input output introduction. <coughs> Any question guys? Tak ada apa? Okay, tak ada ya? Okay, so now let's move to input-output introduction. So, okay, there are three types of common I.O. interface. Okay, the first one here, we call it as an elementary input-output. Okay, and then we have a parallel input-output and serial input-output. So, what is elementary input output? So, elementary input output is actually a simple two-state device such as LED and switches. Kenapa kita pakai simple two-state device? Sebabnya dia, ada, dia hanya ada dua keadaan sama ada on atau off. Which is satu, logik satu ataupun logik kosong. Okay. So, elementary I.O. is a two-state device. Either is logic one or logic zero ataupun on ataupun off. Contohnya LED, LED kamu boleh nyala dan tak nyala. Switch, switch sama ada kamu press ataupun kamu kamu tekan ataupun kamu tak tekan. Kalau kamu tekan, dia akan produce one. Tak tekan, dia akan produce zero. But it depend on the switches lah. Sama ada you use an active low switch or active high switch. Depend on the switch that you're going to use. Okay, then we have a parallel I.O. Okay, di mana parallel is all the data exchange one byte at a time. Okay, kita hantar data parallelly. Secara parallel. Secara serentak semua sekali. Kalau kamu ada 8 bit data, kamu hantar 8 bit data pada masa yang sama. That is a parallel. I.O. What about the serial I.O.? Okay, the serial I.O. is a data exchange one bit at a time. Okay, hanya satu bit data akan berubah pada satu-satu masa. Okay, you you send one bit data at one time. Kalau kamu ada lapan data, so kamu kena ada lapan cycle to send the whole lapan data. Okay, because this is a serial. One by one. Kita hantar serially. Okay, so this is the Art Mega 32 I.O. ports. Kita dah pernah tengok sebelum ni. For Art Mega 32, we have a total of 40 pin out. Ada 40 pin. Okay, 32 daripadanya are dedicated to our input output port. Di mana 8 untuk port A, 8 lagi untuk port B, 8 untuk port C and another 8 untuk port D. Okay, so total number of input output port is 32. So what about the rest? Okay, the rest is for reset, 
VCC, ground, oscillator, okay, ARF, ABCC dan ground. Okay, yang kita nak fokus dekat sini lah. Port A, port B, port C and port D. <coughs> okay, so the rest of the 8 bit, okay, instead of the 32 bit yang kita dedicated untuk import output port, what about the rest of the 8 bit? The rest of the 8 bit, okay, where the pin market with G and D, are to be grounded. Okay, every time you see the okay pin 11 dengan pin 31 ni kamu bolehlah letakkan dia kepada ground. VCC and ABCC need to be given 5 volt. Okay, so VCC connected to 5 volt, ABCC need to connected to 5 volt as well. Okay, so jangan lebih daripada 5 volt. If you lebih daripada 5 volt wifi, the chip will be burn. Okay, akan rosak, damage. Okay, while the reset Pin is also a high, but we usually prefer to put a switch at the point for the reset of the chip. Okay, so this reset is used for to reset your chip lah. Okay, so every time you're going to reset your chip, just press this switch and then the reset will trigger. <coughs> okay, so this is the connection lah. Okay, the basic connection to your Atmega 32 IC. Okay, again, kita recall balik, kita dah pernah belajar sebelum ni. Okay, I.O. port register, there are three register associated with input output port in MVR, which is we have the DD, RX register, port X register, and pin X register. So, you have a total of four port, port A, port B, port C, port D. So, for the whole of this port have this DD, R, X, port X, and pin X. Okay, so what this DDR X do? Okay, untuk determine sama ada kamu nak jadikan dia sebagai input port ataupun output port. If you put 1, now you know that you going to make it as like output port. If you put 0, it become input port. While port X is used to send the data to the pin. Okay, kamu ada data daripada CPU, kamu nak hantar ke output, ke luar. Okay, we going to use the port, port X register. If you're going to read a data from switches daripada luar, masuk ke dalam CPU, okay, we're going to use this pin X register. Okay, which is this pin X register, read the data present at your pin out here. Okay, so this X here, you can change with either A, B, C, ataupun D. <coughs> Okay, so let's look at the I.O. programming in C. Okay, kita dah tengok dah kita punya I.O. in Atmega 32. Okay, we know that we, we have a total of 32 input output port, which is from the 32, we can divide it into four eight ports, which is port A, port B, port C, and port D. Each of the port A, port B, port C, and port D have three more registers that you need to know, which is the GDRX, pin X, and port X. So now we are going to to program this register by using C programming. Okay, previously kita dah guna assembly language, now we're going to do it in C language. So first, how to make the I.O. port as an input or output port? Okay, to make a I.O. port sebagai input dengan output port, okay, we need to initialize it at the DDRX register. Okay, again, this DDRX is more important thing lah. Okay, the most important thing in Atmega. In which it will determine sama ada kamu punya port tu, kamu nak jadikan ini sebagai input ataupun output. Okay, if you put a zero, kamu akan jadikan dia input. If you put a one, then you make this as a output point. <coughs> Example. Okay, you're going to make a port P as an output. So, what you going to do? Okay, nak jadikan port B sebagai output. So, you need to put 1 to your DDRB lah. Okay, because 1 is output. So, put 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, this value here to your DDRB. So, what happens here? The whole port B become output port. Okay, so this is what we write earlier in the assembly language. Okay, 
one 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 is actually equivalent to ff or xfs put this value to r16 and then out ddrb r16 okay so this value ff hantar pada ddrb so this is what you done in assembly language what about c programming okay you just simply write ddrb sama dengan ox ff okay no need to use the general purpose register directly send out the value okay to your ddrb so this, that is the that is why the c programming more is easier compared to assembly language because it's a more direct compared to assembly assembly you need to use the general purpose register f uh, your medium penghantaran from immediate value okay to your io register but in sing language you can immediately send out the that value to your io register <coughs> okay next to make a port as an input what you need to do okay so it's just simply write ddrx with zero okay put zero automatic they akan ke dalam ddrx automatic it will become your input port okay for example here make port b as a input okay tukar ini as a input uh, i assume that all of you already downloaded the this lecture notes betul from my website semua dah download ke okay dah ya yeah. Okay, so so sekarang ni kamu nak jadikan port B sebagai input. So what you need to do is you put lah sebab port B kita 8 bit. So we need to put 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to DDRB. So automatically uh, port B akan jadi input B. Okay, so this is how we going to write down in assembly language. Masukkan OX 00 ke R16 and from there R16 letak pula dekat DDRB. But in C language, okay, you just simply write down DDRB sama dengan kosong. So what happen? The whole port B become input port. <coughs> okay, what about if you're going to have a mixed input and output port at the same time? Boleh? Tak ada masalah. Okay, contohlah kalau kamu nak Sebelum ni kita selalu buat Okay, the whole port B as an input port The whole port C as an output port Why not we make Some of the port B As an input and some of them As a output Boleh, as long as you put the The right value to your DDRX Then It will become the input and output port According to what you Want uh, according to what you planning or you want going to use. Okay, for example here, yeah? make pin 78 of port B as an input while the rest pin pin 30 as a output. Okay, so this is your DDRB. Okay, and then ingat lagi DDRB ada berapa? Ada 8, 8 bit. Okay, so this is big kosong, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so sekarang ni dia kata 7 hingga 4, jadikan dia sebagai input. 3 hingga kosong, jadikan dia sebagai output. Macam mana nak buat? Sama juga, letak kosong untuk input, letak 1. Untuk output. So, why pun je? You just simply write down DDRP sama dengan OX 0 F. Ataupun kalau kamu tak nak guna ni hexadecimal, okay, kamu takut confuse masa nak tukar ni, why not you just simply put DDRP sama dengan OX eh, sorry, 0 B okay, pakai je binary number tak salah Okay, kosong, 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 kosong. So, yang ni akan jadi input. And then, satu, 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 satu. Bit tiga hingga bit kosong jadi 
output. Okay, and then jangan lupa lah this semi column here. <coughs> okay, another example. Okay, make odd pin as an input. Why? Even pin as a output. Okay, so pin ganjil sebagai input. Okay, so this is your DDRC. Ni sekarang ni kat DDRC. Okay. Lukis lah. Kalau kamu nak lukis pun boleh. Tak nak lukis pun boleh. Okay. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so dia kata kat sini. Okay, pin ganjil sebagai input. Okay, so semua yang ganjil sebagai input. Genap. Output. Okay, so output satu, input kosong. So, this is the number that you're going to put to initialize to your DDRC. Okay, so simply write down DDRC sama dengan kosong B kosong satu kosong satu kosong satu kosong satu. Ataupun boleh juga DDRC sama dengan 0x5 5. Benda yang sama. Okay, which is you make your odd pin as an input and ganjil pin, oh sorry, pin genap sebagai output. <coughs> okay, next. To accept the port register as a byte, use the port X label. Okay, means that you're going to send out a data. Okay, to your output. So, what are we going to do? We're going to use the port X register. Okay. Then, using the DDRX to indicate the data direction. So, the DDRX will apa ni, tentukan sama ada dia nak jadi input output, input port ataupun output port. While pin X Kalau kamu nak read data from the input port. Okay, for example. Kita tengok example yang ni. LEDs are connected to pin of port B. Okay, lukislah art mega ke kamu. So, this is my art mega. Saya ada port B. Okay, the whole port B connected to LED. Okay, lukislah kamu ni LED. Okay, so write an AVRC program that show the count from 0 to FF, which is like the kosong kosong to satu satu on the LED. Okay, so kalau kosong dia akan tunjuk kosong 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 kosong. Okay, so this is representing kosong. Kalau satu kosong 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 satu dua kosong 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 satu kosong tiga satu satu eh sampailah dua lima lima is satu 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 okay kamu nak buat counting and nak hantar dekat LED so macam mana nak buat kita buat program Okay, so what are we going to write in your program? So first, include dulu lah. Include abr slash io dot h. Okay, and then after you include this file here, so you start with your main program, int main boy. Okay, open curly bracket and close curly bracket. <coughs> okay, next. Nak buat apa? Initialize dulu. Kita punya port B. Nak jadi input port ke output port? So, since this one here is connected to LED, so automatic your port B become output port. So, D, D, R, B sama dengan O, X, F, F. Sebab kamu sambung pada LED. Okay. And then use a while one. Okay. So, this will be done forever. Okay, so next what you going to do? Port B sama dengan port B tambah satu. Okay, 
Boleh juga kat sini kamu kamu nak letak port B ataupun kamu initialize lah unsigned char port B. Okey kita initialize dululah. Nak bagus kita initialize. Port B ni supaya dia 8 bit saja. So unsigned char port B sama dengan kosong. Okay, we started the port B with kosong and then what happened here? Kosong sama dengan port B sama dengan kosong tambah satu dia akan jadi satu and then satu tambah satu jadi dua and keep repeating forever. Okay, so this is the program lah that you're going to write in order to do the counting on the port B and send the result to your LED. <coughs> Okay, so next is a pull up resistor. Okay, kenapa pull up resistor? Okay, there is a pull up resistor for each of the MBR pin. This pull up resistor is useful to reduce noise. Okay, since input of the MBR are generally in a high state, those make them prone to catching noise and picking up false signal. So, every time if you make your port as an input port, so make sure that you enable the pull up. Resistor. Macam mana nak enable pull up resistor? Just put one to your port X register. Contohlah kalau kamu make your port C as an input port. Okay, DDRC sama dengan kosong. And then enable pull up resistor. Port C equal to OXFF. So now you are already enable your port C pull up resistor. Okay, to deactivate a pull up resistor, put zero into bits of the port X register. So why pull up resistor? Because you're going to reduce some noise whenever you press your switches. <coughs> okay, contoh. This is an example of code without a pull up resistor. Okay, so what this code do? Okay, kita tengok dulu. This is in, in assembly language and after that it will it converted to C program. Okay, mula-mula C, include amplitude.inc. This one is equivalent to this one. Hashtag include lbr slash io.h. Okay, load i r60 ox 0 out ddrc r60. So, what happened here? You're going to make your port C sebagai input. Okay, how to write down in C program? Okay, simply write down ddrc sama dengan kosong. Okay, assembly, you need two lines. To make your port C as input, but C plug you only need one line to make your port C as input. And then load I DR16OXFF out DDRBR16. So this one here, port B, kamu nak jadikan dia sebagai output. Okay, so what about in C programming? How to make your port B as output? DDRB sama dengan OXFF. Okay. So, kat sini. Apa yang kat sini buat? Okay, mula-mula dia buat apa? In R16 pin C. So, dia dia baca value daripada pin C. Sebab kita dah initialize port C tadi sebagai input. So, kita baca value daripada pin C masuk ke R16. So, this one here. Lagi bagus kalau kamu declare dahulu kat sini. Okay, unsign char Z. Okay, kita bagi tahu bahawa Z kita ni adalah unsigned number. Okay, better you initialize your Z. Sebab kat sini kamu pakai variable Z ni. Okay, sometimes some of the compiler, if you not uh, declare this one here as a char atau integer, okay, kan dia akan produce an error. So, better you uh, declare the data size, okay. Kalau tak nanti kamu akan encounter some error. Okay. So in R16 pin C. Maksudnya ni. Okay. Masukkan value daripada pin C masuk ke dalam Z. Okay. R16 ni become your Z lah. In C programming. And then load I R17 with 5. Add R16 with R17. Apa nak buat ni? So R16 actually sama dengan R16 tambah dengan 5. So this one here, this two line here, you already made it as a one line. Just simply write down Z sama dengan Z tambah 5. 
<coughs> Lepas tu next out Port B R16 Okay so what happen here You going to set the output of R16 ke port B So just put port B sama dengan Z And then close clear bracket Okay you see here this thing here Happen continuously So that's why we put it inside while Okay, so this is how we're going to do the same thing back in the C programming. Okay, this is without the pull-up resistor lah. What about if you're going to enable the pull-up resistor? Okay, to enable the pull-up resistor, you just include this one line je. Tambah je yang ni je. Port C sama dengan OXFF. So now you already enable your pull-up resistor. Yang lain tu semuanya sama except this line. This line dia kamu tambah. <coughs> okay, so let's look at the example. The MBR assembly code below show how to configure the pin on port X. Okay, so this ni bukan assembly code ya. Eh. This is a C code Okay, so this C code here uh, show you how to configure the pin in the certain port. Contoh kalau kamu buat macam ni, DDRA sama dengan OXFF means that you're going to make your the whole port S uh, as an output. DDRB sama dengan kosong, maksudnya kat sini the whole port B as an input. DDRC sama dengan F kosong, maksudnya kat sini Okay, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, this is your output. Okay, pin 7 hingga pin 5. Eh, sorry, 4 sebagai output. Y 0 hingga 3 sebagai input. Okay, so you can mix input and output in the same port. Okay, another contoh. Okay, you're going to toggle all a bit of fork B forever with some time delay between on and off state. Okay, kamu nak buat toggling your port B selamanya, tapi dia akan ada a certain delay between the toggling process. So, how do you going to do that? Okay, you just include this MBRIO.H, start your main program. Okay, and then since this is port B, you're going to toggle means that you're going to make your port B as an output port. So that's why DDRB sama dengan OSFS. So initialize your port B sebagai output port. Okay, then after that, since you're going to use it forever, continuously, so you use a while one, open clear bracket and close clear bracket and all the toggle process will be done inside here. Okay, so port B sama dengan D is the first value that you're going to send out call the delay okay you see here in c programming to call a subroutine we just simply write down something like this okay dalam assembly kita use a call instruction to call the delay subroutine but in c programming to call the subroutine just look to list macam ni delay the name of the subroutine follow with the bracket okay and then you toggle back the value Port B sama dengan 101010. You see the, the 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 whole B is a toggling and then call another delay and it will keep repeating until you end the program. <coughs> okay. Now we have another example. Okay, uh, untuk yang ni kita ada banyak example actually. Okay, so you are going to write a program to perform the following. Okay, keep monitoring PB2 until it become high. Okay, you look at this dulu. Okay, you have a PB2. This is a PB2. Since this is a keep mon monitoring, you know that uh, this is your switches. Okay, you sambung kepada switches until it become high. Mean that if you press, it will produce one. If not press, it produce zero and when pb2 become high write value 45 to port c so you have a port c okay 8 bit kalau pb2 
sama dengan 1 so what happen hantar 45 ke port C if not kosong hantar <coughs> ok when PB2 become high bright value 45 to port C and also send high to low pass to PD3 ok ada satu lagi PD3 ok and then pada masa yang sama hantar high high to low pass to PD3 ok kamu nak hantar low to high pass to PD3 so how to do that ok again Macam biasalah, kita include dulu the files. Okay, started with your main program and initialize your input output point. Okay, so in this case here, okay, it use the DDRB sama dengan tilde satu shift to the left two time. Maksudnya, dia nak jadi port B2 as input, the, the rest of the port B as a output. Okay, sometimes kita boleh, since kat sini, port B uh, tak melibatkan mana-mana port B yang lain. So, why not we just simply write down DDRB sama dengan kosong. Okay, just make the, the whole port B as a input port. Sebabnya kita tak ada, PB lain tak ada jadi jadi input. So, why not we make it as a input port. And this PD3 3 pun sama juga. Why not we make the, the whole port D, T, port D as a output port. Okay. Port C of course lah. Port C dia dah bagi tahu kat sini port C output. So that's why DDRC sama dengan OX FF. Okay. So if you take a certain input, uh, a, a certain bit as an input. Okay. Something like this. Ataupun sometimes kita boleh tulis this one dia sama dengan DD. RB sama dengan kosong B Okay, kita ambil PB2 je Jadikan input, yang lain jadikan Output <coughs> Okay, pun boleh juga macam ni Okay, this one here actually similar to this one Okay, then you need to enable the pull up resistor lah Okay so port B sama dengan kosong B eh, kosong 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 satu kosong kosong enable pull up resistor dekat PB2 ok so yang ni pun sama this one ya kalau kamu nak nak jadikan PD3 je sebagai output pun boleh so you simply write down D D R D sama dengan kosong B Okay, yang lain kamu jadikan dia sebagai input port. PD3 je kamu jadikan dia sebagai output. Okay, so similar to this one. Ataupun kalau kamu tak nak fikir banyak fikir, just make the whole port B as a output, the whole port B as a input pun boleh. Okay, next. Dia kata kat situ, monitor. Okay, means that you need to monitor lah PB2. Okay, if the PB2 sama dengan high, Okay, if pin B sama dengan 0B, okay, this is a value. Okay, that you're going to check either this value is high or not. Okay, PB sama dengan kosong B, kosong, 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 satu, kosong, kosong. Okay, this is your PB2. Either it's a high or not. If high, what happen? Hantar 45 ke port C. And then pada masa yang sama, hantar high to low pass to PD3. Okay, so hantar dulu high kat PD3 and then after that hantar low kat PD3 <coughs> ok else ok if not what happen ok do nothing lah tak ada buat apa apa ok so this is the uh, the program how to write the program to perform this uh, thing here ok any question up until here ada soalan tak if no soalan, I think we take a 10 minutes break Pukul, sorry 15 minit break Pukul 4 suku nanti kita Sambung semula, ok boleh ya? Ok so now we going to look at the elementary I.O We have a few elementary I.O to look at Ok the first one here Ok let's look at the introduction of elementary I.O So as I mentioned earlier 
uh, elementary I/O is a two-state peripheral device which allowing two-state conditions such as on or off, logic one or logic zero. So, example of elementary I/O such as a bulb, which means the bulb can only either turn on, light on or light off. So, in AVR, it can involve more than one bit at a time. As an as, uh, example of binary code decimal in in which in binary code decimal, as we know that the binary code decimal, you can turn on and turn off more than one bit at one time. So the requirement here is bit signal can be written to output device under a program control or a bit signal can be read from input device under the program controls. So the device required are such as a LASH, okay, for the output or tri-state buffer for the input. So example of output device such as a LED, bulb, relay score, 77 display. Why example for input devices such as a push button, proximity switch, rotary PCD decoder, and then you have the switches, all the switches, either is a uh, look, uh, if high state switch or low state switch and etc. Okay, so let's look at the, the first one of the elementary I.O. We call it as a LEDs. Okay, so this LEDs, yang ni kamu dah pernah belajar dulu in your digital electronic classes. Okay, in which this is a semiconductor device that convert electrical energy directly into a discrete color of light. Okay, so it have a two terminals here, which is anode and cathode, and this is the how you going to determine whether it is a positive terminal or negative terminal, and this is the symbol of the LED. So the LED has two terminals and must be connected correctly. If not, then the, your LED might be damaged. Okay, LED kamu akan terbakar if kamu sambung salah. So the analog, so the anode, which is a positive terminal. Okay, consists of a long legs. Okay, you, if you see the long legs here, means that it is a anode terminal and a shorter end inside of the LED and it has a shorter end. Why the cathode is a short lead, okay, the other kaki yang pendek and has a larger end inside of the LED and sometimes slight flat at the body of run LED. So this LED is easily damaged by heat. Okay, so make sure that you Every time you're going to use the LED, make sure that you need to put a resistor in between the LED and your power source. If not, th then your LED will might damage. Okay, so it has a variety of color depending by the semiconductor material used. Okay, so this is an example of the LEDs and the colors of the LEDs. <coughs> okay, and then so I will go more quick on this part here because this one is all just the introduction of the LEDs. Okay, make sure that you never connect an LED directly to the battery or power supply. Or if not, then your the LED might be broken or damaged. Okay, so, so LED must have a resistor in a series. Okay, so paling, uh, please, the, the resistor value is from 330 ohms to 1 kilo Ohm depending on the voltage that you're going to use. Okay, so usually we we can use a 330 is so more than enough lah to protect our LED from damage. Okay, and then this one here, how to calculate the resistor value is by using this formula here. Okay, so this one you already learned in your uh, theory lita. Okay, which is you know that V. <laughs> V is equal to IR. Okay, based on this equation here, you can uh, find out what is your resistance value and all those things. And how to turn on an ED, okay, on the arc mega. So it depending on the what we call the <coughs> on the type of LED that you're going to use. Either is a common cathode or common anode. Okay, for example here. Okay, so this is. Positive and negative terminal, okay. Positive connected to uh, your VCC, and then negative are connected to your AVR. If you put zero to your AVR, 
Uh, sorry, if you put one to your MBR, so what happened here? Because this is a high, and this is also high. If high and high, then what happened? No current can flow from in the air on your LED because both are have the same high, uh, have the same value. Okay, if this one is high, and apparently the current output pin you put a zero, so zero. So what happened? This is a low. Then the current can flow from high to low. Then what happened? The LED will turn on again. As I mentioned, the uh, this value here, okay, that you're going to put to your to your microcontroller is based on the type of LED that you're going to use. Either it's a positive, uh, sorry, common ended or common gated. Okay, so this is how you're going to connect your LED to your uh, Atmega 32. Okay, so if you use a common Anode, okay, so all the positive terminal must connected to VCC while the negative terminal connected to your input output ports. Okay, so to turn on this LED, you need to give zero to your output port so that the current can flow from VCC to your microcontroller. Then the LED will turn on. If you put one, so what happened? This uh, the LED will turn off. Why? Because both have high value. Okay, so current cannot flow from VCC to your microcontroller. Okay, and then make sure that you put a resistor lah in between. Okay, your LEDs and your VCC to protect your LED from burning out. <coughs> okay, so this is the symbols. Okay, for the common and LED. So you see here, all the positive terminal are connected to your VCC. So we call it as a common inlet. Okay, so common inlet to turn on, you need to give zero, and turn off, you need to give one. Okay. Okay, for example, how to write the what we call here program. Okay, if you're using a elementary I/O. Okay, so write a program to count up and show the result of the counting by display at eight LED that are connected to port A. So this one actually we already did it in the previous slide. Okay, which is okay. This is in what you write down in the assembly language lah. Okay, because to display the LED, you need to have a delay. Okay, why do you need to have a certain delay? Because why? Because if you not put a delay in between the sequence of the LED, you cannot see the changes. Okay, from one blinking to another blinking because it's very fast. Okay, you cannot see the changes. So it's advised to put a delay so that you can see the change from uh, the, uh, the LED movement from one state to another state. Okay, since this one here, it use the subroutine, okay, a delay subroutine. So that's why you see here, you need to in initialize the stack pointer, okay, for the assembly language. But in C programming, the good thing about C programming is you don't need to initialize the stack pointer. Okay, so the stack pointer will be initialized automatically by C compiler. So no need to initialize the C, uh, the stack point pointer in your C programming, even though you, you are going to use the subroutine. Okay, so this is what, okay, this is the same program, okay, to display the county sequence by using a C programming. <laughs> Okay, so first we include this file here. Okay, and then you can include the F underscore CPU. So this is dependent on the CPU that you're going to use. Either you're going to use a 1 megahertz, 8 megahertz, and etc. So this one here is use a 1 megahertz CPU. And include util underscore delay. Why we include this here? Because we are going to use a delay function here. Okay, because every time you're going to display an LED, 
it advised to put a certain delay so that you can see the movement, the LED blinking from one pattern to another pattern. If not, you cannot see the changes of the LED blinking. Okay. So this is your main program. Okay, started with integer main void. Okay, since this LED are connected to port A, so need to make sure that your port A become an output port by, by writing DDRA sama dengan OXFF. Okay, then I use the counter. Okay, I, I just use the unsigned chart counter. Okay, as a uh, variable of my counter. And I start my counter with zero. <coughs> and then since this one here will be done continuously, so I put all the counting inside of my while loop. Okay, so port A equal to counter, so they can display kosong dahulu, so all the LED will turn off. And then counter sama dengan counter tambah satu. So what happened here is now my counter value is kosong, 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 satu. So this LED will turn on and I call a delay here. So this delay here will generate a one millisecond delay. Okay, then what happened next is my counter will increment it by two, three, four, five, and see until it's 255. Five. Why 255? Five? Because it's a chart. Okay, only a up until 8 bit data. Okay, then we have the seven segment display. Okay. So there are applications where you need to display a decimal digit using a seven segment LED display. Okay, sometimes you're going to do a county sequence, but you don't want to, to decode the LEDs. Now you're going to make sure that the LEDs uh, the, will display the exact decimal value of that county sequence. So to do that, we can use a seven segment. Display. So the display could represent the number of the time a switch was pressed or the number of the time that the counting is increases. Okay, so digit 0 to 9 and hex A to F can be displayed by giving the proper seven segment code. So this one here also you already learned in the digital electronics. Okay, so untuk seven segment display kita akan ada lapan LED which is A B C D E F G and H for the decimal point. Okay, to turn on the certain LED, you need to decide lah. Depending on the either you use a common ended or common ended. If common ended is used, then to turn on you need to give zero. To turn off you need to give one. If you use a common ended, then to turn on you need to give one and turn off to, you need to give. Zero. So this is the value that you need, you need to give in order to display this value on your seven segment display. <coughs> okay, contoh kat sini. Okay, kalau kamu nak display kosong. Okay, to display kosong, A, B, C, D, E, F kena nyala. So that's why A, B, C, D, E, F you put Y while G you put zero. So it will display zero. If you're going to display one, B and C turn on while the rest of the LED should be turned off. So, so that's why B and C turn on, the rest turn off. Okay, so according to this uh, uh, symbol here, you can derive the codes here. Okay, which one you're going to turn on, which one you're going to turn off. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, okay, there are two types of common in seven segment display. One is a common ended, okay, in which require a VCC LED on and output is low. Okay, means that when you use a common ended, uh, okay, to turn on, you need to give zero. Okay, if you going to turn off next, okay, you need to set one. For the common cathode, no VCC means that all of the cathode are connected to ground. Okay, means that cat sini. Okay, so this is your 7 segment display. Okay, the 7 segment display is actually is make up of the 8 LEDs. Okay, diperbuat daripada 8 LEDs. Some, okay, sama ada ianya disab, ber, 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 uh, connected as a common ended ataupun a common cathode. Contoh kalau common cathode, 
if you can see here, all of the cathode negative terminal of this LED, okay, kamu tengok, this is a negative terminal lah, untuk setiap LED, are connected to the same ground. Okay, kamu tengok, semua negative terminal sambung kepada ground. <coughs> Okay, so macam mana nak on? To turn on, you need to give one to your micro C. Okay, kenapa one? Because if you give one, okay, so current can flow from high to low. Okay, so LED, server segment display will turn on. If you give zero, because this zero, and then the output you give to your micro P also zero, then what happen? LED will turn off. For the common anode, kamu tengok ni, kamu punya anode punya connection, or your LED punya connection, all of the positive terminal of your LED are connected to the same source, which is VCC. Okay, so macam mana kita nak turn on? To turn on, you need to give zero. While turn off, you need to give one. Okay, so you need to make sure lah which common that your that, uh, that you're going to use. Either it's a common anode or common cathode. Okay? In the question, it will ask you whether you're going to use a common anode ataupun common cathode. Kalau kamu pakai common anode tapi kamu uh, kamu buat dia punya sequence salah which is kamu guna common cathode punya sequence then the kamu punya jawapan akan jadi salah. So, the your answer will be zero lah. Okay? Will be given as zero marks. Okay, so this is a seven segment display. Okay, so this is a common cathode. Okay, you see here all the negative LEDs are connected to the common ground. Okay, and then the positive is connected to your micro P. Okay, macam mana nak on? Kena letak satu lah dekat sini. Kenapa satu? Sebab sini high and this is a low. So the current can flow from high to low. If you put zero, 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 so current cannot flow LED turn off. Okay, untuk common anode, okay, you see here all the positive terminal, all the anode terminal are connected to VCC and this is connected to your micro P. So, what you going to do in order to turn it on? Okay, so you need to make put zero lah dekat micro P kamu. Okay, when you put zero what happens here? Okay, because this is a high and this is a low, the current can flow from high to low and the, all the LEDs will Turn on. What happens if you put one high and high? That current cannot flow. LED turn off. So you need to make sure lah. Okay, which uh, common that the question asks in the final exam ataupun dalam test. Okay, for example, let's look at the examples here. Okay, the seven seven display could be attached to MVR as below. Okay, if 0B001111 was an output on the port B, the following segment would be on. Okay, so yang ni dia akan hantar. Okay, so this is the value that will be set out to your port B. Okay, so this one is actually connected to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay, first thing first, you need to identify what common this seven segment use. Okay, so kamu tengok sini, common cathode. Kenapa common cathode? Kamu tengok, all of the LEDs are connected to ground. Okay, kalau common anode, dia akan tulis sini VCC. Okay, so untuk common cathode, <coughs> okay, to turn on an LED, you need to bagi satu. Okay, if you put zero, what happened? LED. Okay, you see here, A nyala, B also nyala, C satu nyala, D nyala, E nyala, F nyala, G and H kosong-kosong, which is padam. Okay, so now, this value here, you're going to display zero on your segment segment display according to this value that you sent out from your port B. Okay, another example. Okay, so a seven segment is connected to port C. 
Okay, you're going to write a code that display one on the seven seven display. Okay, you draw your Admega 32 proxy sambung kepada seven seven display. Okay, let's this one here is common catered seven seven display. So how to write the program? Okay, mula mula macam biasa lah. Include avr slash io dot h okay and then after that you int main what okay start your main program <coughs> okay you're going to display number satu the cut seven seven display okay before we going to display this number one to seven display so what you going to do cut port c okay we need to make sure that port c become output port lah sebab disambung kepada Kamu punya 7-7 display. How to make a port C as output port? Okay, you just simply write down DDRC sama dengan OXFF. Port C jadi output port. Okay, now you're going to send the value to your seven segment display so that it will display number one okay so number one so you can identify lah a b c d e f g h okay which value that you're going to send out to your port c okay so that it will display number satu okay for the number one Okay, so this is your seven seven display. A B C D E F G and H. Okay, untuk display nombor satu B and C kena turn on. Okay, kena lights on. Why the rest of LED turn off? Okay, so B and C sebab dia is a common catheter. Common catheter letak satu dia nyala, letak kosong dia padam. Okay, so B C turn on while the rest you put zero. Okay, so what will be the value? Okay, sama dengan kosong X, kosong enam. Ataupun, you can simply write down port C sama dengan 0B0000011. So, it will display number 1. To your 7, 7 display that use common catheter. Okay. Any question up until here? Ada soalan tak? Okay, okay. Okay, next. Kita tengok. Sama juga dengan yang sebelum ni. Okay, so you're going to write a program to display number 3 on 7 segment display. Okay, let's lah. This one here, I uh, use common enough. Contoh dalam case ni, saya pakai common enough. Okay, so mula-mula apa kita kena buat? Okay, include dulu. AVR slash IO dot H. Okay, INT main void. Okay, and then open clear bracket, close clear bracket. Okay, port C sambung pada 7 seven display. So, port C ni mestilah output port. So, what you going to do? DDRC sama dengan OX FF. So, port C output. Okay, next kita nak tentukan what is the value that we going to send out to port C. Okay, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, nombor tiga. Nak display nombor tiga, A kena nyala, B nyala, C nyala, D nyala. Sorry, G kat sini ya. Eh. Ni H. Okay, G also kena nyala. F, E dengan H kena padang. Okay, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay, so sekarang ni, this is a common kata, eh sorry, common inlet. Okay, for the common inlet, <coughs> uh, 
Okey, zero dia akan on. Kalau bagi satu dia akan off. So what would be the number that you need to put here? Okey, A B C D dengan G kan kau kena letak kosong lah. A B C D dengan G letak kosong. Yang lain kamu letak satu. Okey, tak sama dengan yang ni. Sebab yang ni dia pakai common ketat. Sekarang case ni saya pakai common and then. Okey, jangan keliru lah kenapa yang ni value lain. Yang ni value lain. Sebab dia punya common dia tak sama. Okey, so what would be the value? So, 0B 1010000. So, automatic you display nombor 3 dekat 7 segmen display. Macam tu je. Okay, as simple as that. Okay, another question. Banyak, banyak ni. Uh, what we call here, banyak example. Okay, untuk modul yang ni. Okay, which is a quite uh, useful lah. Quite hand, handful for you. Okay, because banyak uh, example yang kamu boleh rujuk. Okay, a switch is connected to pin PB0 and LED to PB7. Okay, kamu nampak ni. PB sorok kosong, PB soft tujuh. Satu sambung kepada switch, satu kepada, sambung kepada LED. So, sekarang ni kat port B ada dua benda. Satu input, satu output. Okay, so kamu tak bolehlah jadikan dia kesemua dia sebagai input atau kesemua dia sebagai output. Sebab dia dah mix dah input dan output sekarang ni. Okay, write a program to get the status of the switch and display it at the LED. Okay, bila kamu press switch, LED turn off. Okay, first thing first. Okay, dia bagi ni, gambar macam ni. Okay, gambar ABR kamu and all the connection. First, you need to identify what type of switch that you going uh, that use in this program, uh, in this subject here. Is it a active low or active high switch? Siapa nak tolong? Based on this symbol, is it an active low switch or active high switch? Active high. Active high. Is it active high or active low? Okay, maksud active high and active low is bila kamu press, dia akan bagi value tu. If not press, then dia akan bagi value yang lain lah. Okay, in this case here, this one is active low switch. Okay, kenapa? Kalau kamu tekan je switch ni, dia akan bagi kosong. If you not press this switch, the value always one. Okay? So, so this one here, this is an active low switch. Okay, what about this LED? Is it a common ketat or common anode? Common ketat. Okay, so this one is common ketat. Kenapa? Ketat sambung kepada ground. Okay, so kita dah identify active low switch and common ketat. Okay, now barulah kita nak start buat programming. Okay, so start lah macam biasa. Slash uh, hashtag include avr slash io dot h and then int main void. Okay, open clear bracket, close clear bracket. Okay, so mula-mula kita nak kena initialize kita punya input output port. Okay, sebab kat sini kamu, kamu tengok PB0 kamu nak jadikan dia sebagai input. PB7 kamu nak jadikan dia sebagai output. So, dia ada combination of input and input at the same time. Okay, so DDRP pakai je binary. Senang kita nak setting. Okay, PB7 output. So, output kita kena bagi satu lah. Satu, 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 satu. Satu, 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 kosong. Okay, bagi PB kosong je yang input. Yang lain kamu setkan dia sebagai output. Okay, since this one here is input, PB kosong sebagai input, so kamu kena uh, apa ni 
kamu kena what we call here kamu kena enable the pull up resistor macam mana nak enable pull up resistor port B okey untuk yang output kamu letakkan dia sebagai kosong jangan letak satu kalau kamu letak satu maksudnya kamu dah send satu kepada port B ni which is salah lah okey and then yang input kita jadikan dia satu okey dia is a pull up resistor <coughs> okey actually this one ya yang dua ni adalah equivalent lah sama ada kamu nak tulis macam ni ataupun nak tulis macam yang kat bawah ni kat bawah ni fancy sikit lah cara penulisannya compare macam yang atas ni yang atas ni macam biasa-biasa sangat ok next bila dah initialize input output port ok sebab kita nak monitor if monitor means that we going to check it continuously ok selama-lamanya so we use a while loop ok open clear bracket close clear bracket untuk kamu punya while loop ok so then kamu letaklah if ok pin B ok dia kata write a program to get the status of the LED and display it at a LED press switch LED off ok bila press saja LED off bila tak press LED on <coughs> ok so what happen here is bila kita press ok which is dia akan bagi kosong so kamu letaklah when pin B sama dengan kosong B 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 kosong bila yang ni dia dapat kosong ok so what happen here is open clear bracket bawah ni so kamu boleh bagi tahu port B sama dengan kosong ok atau port B sama dengan kosong B kosong 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 satu ok yang satu ni kita maintain lah sebab yang D is a pull up resistor jangan kamu disable pula pull up resistor kat situ ok sebab kita nak hantar dekat dekat sini PB7 ok kita off kan dekat PB7 ok else Then what happen? Bila bit kosong PB kosong ni sama dengan satu, else port B sama dengan zero B satu kosong 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 satu. Okay, sentiasa enable dekat kamu punya pull up resistor. Jangan letak kosong. Kalau kamu letak kosong, automatic dia akan disable. Okay, so this is one. Okay, this is how you going to monitor by using the if else statement. <coughs> okay, ada soalan tak? Okay, tolong baik key ya kat sini. Yang ni salah ni kat sini. Value dia salah. Kalau kamu letak kosong yang ni, maksudnya kat sini PB kosong kamu, kamu dah disable pull up resistor. Which is salah lah. Kita tak nak disable pull up resistor. Sebab PB kosong kita adalah switch kita. Okay, untuk elakkan daripada noise, kita kena always enable pull up resistor. Any question? Ada soalan tak? Okay, if no question, then we go to the next uh, example. Okay, yang ni dia, dia jadi macam ni ya. Eh. Okay, sekejap saya buka dia punya powerpoint dulu. Ini dia ada animation. <coughs> okay. Okay. Using the seven seven display, write a program to display number kosong to number sembilan continuously. Okay. So how to do that? Okay. This is how when you're going to use by using the. Uh, assembly language and this is how you going okay this is how you, you going to uh, do the counting from 0 to 9 by using the C 
programming. Okay. So, cara paling mudah. Okay, this is a, saya tunjuk cara paling mudah lah. Sebab ada cara yang guna loops, which is a quite uh, troublesome sikit nak buat. Okay, sebab kamu kena pakai array. Okay. Tapi yang ini paling mudah sekali untuk kamu. Buat counting daripada kosong hingga sembilan and hantar ke kamu punya port B. Which is kat port B tu kamu sambung kepada seven segment display. Okay, jadi ini is a common common cated ni. Okay, common cated. Dia guna common cated. Okay, mula-mula apa nak buat? Okay, mula-mula kita initialize dulu lah. Okay, include dulu kita punya avr slash io dot h and then guna delay function aja. Okay, to do accounting. Okay, make sure that you need to put a certain delay so that you can see the changes of the counting from zero to Nine. If not, kamu tak nampak dia punya county sequence. Okay. And then start with in int main void. Okay. So since this one here port B is connected to 77 display. So kita initialize port B supaya port B sama dengan output port. Okay. So ddrb sama dengan oxff. So you make the whole port B as an output port. And then sebab dia kata tadi continuously. Yeah, so we put all the counting sequence inside our while loop. So while one, okay mula-mula. Mula-mula kamu nak hantar kosong dulu. Okay untuk kosong B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay untuk kosong yang mana kena nyala, this value kena nyala. <coughs> okay which is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay, so A, B, C, D, E, F nyala yang lain padam. Okay, so D is equivalent to O, X, 3, F. D is kosong. Okay, so that's why port B sama dengan O, X, 3, F. Lepas tu kamu call delay. Okay, then kamu hantar pula satu. Satu B dengan C je nyala. Yang lain padam. Okay, so what would be the value that you need to set out here? O, X, kosong, enam. Okay, so that's why port B sama dengan O, X, kosong, enam. Then call, delay. And then after that, you're going to send nombor dua. Okay, dua is A, B, G, E dengan Z nyala. Okay, so A, B, D, E dengan Z. G nyala, the rest kosong. Okay, so value yang kamu kena hantar is 5, O, X, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, A, B. Okay, 5, B. So that's why 5, B, 2, kosong. Then kamu hantar nombor 3, nombor 4, nombor 5, nombor 6, nombor 7, nombor 8, nombor 9. And this why will keep repeating until you exit your Program. So this is the straightforward lah. Okay, untuk buat counting sequence. Untuk count from 0 to 9 and display pada 7. 7 display. Okay, untuk yang satu lagi, which is by using uh, array. Okay, which is array payah sikit lah kamu kena buat for loop. Okay, yang tu nanti mungkin nanti saya akan tunjuk caranya nanti. Saya rasa ada, ada example in the Next, next slide. Okay. <coughs> okay, so an another example here. Okay, write a FEC program to get a byte of data from port B. Okay, to get a byte. So, means that port B sekarang ni as a input port. Get. Nak read. Okay, and then then set it to port C. Okay, so this is a output. Okay, kamu baca data daripada port B. Okay, so pin B masuk dalam variable Z and then pada masa yang sama kamu lepas tu kamu hantar pula yang ni kepada port C port C sama dengan Z ok so baca dulu pin B value daripada pin B letak dalam variable and then next value variable tu kamu hantar ke 
port C. So macam mana nak buat? Okay, so this is a solution. First is include avr slash io.hash. Start your main program. And then, okay, since this, you, we use it a variable. So we need to declare lah our variable. Unsigned char temp. Okay, in this one, it use a temp. Okay, kalau macam ni, saya char z lah. Okay, any variable names that you're going to use. Okay, and then in the slash ddrb sama dengan kosong. Sebabnya, dia DDRB kita sebagai input. And DDRC sebagai OXFS. Di mana port C sebagai output. Okay, at the same time, jangan, jangan lupa. Enable your pull up resistor. Port B sama dengan OX. FX. Sebabnya yang ni input. Input kena always enable pull up resistor. <coughs> okay. And then while while. Okay. Temp equal to pin B. Macam ni lah. Z sama dengan pin B. Any value from pin B akan masuk ke pin Z. Uh, akan masuk ke variable Z. And then next. I set out the same value to the Port C. So, port C sama dengan temp. Okay. So, this is the program. Okay. To read a data from port B and send it to the port C. <coughs> okay. So, another example. Okay. Write an FLC program to monitor bit 7 of port B. If it is 1, Make bit for port B as an input, else change pin for port B as a output. Okay, lukis dulu. Kamu ada PB7. Okay, monitor. Maksudnya ni kamu sambung kepada switch lah. Sebab dia monitor. So, dia is an input lah. Okay, and then kamu ada PB4. Okay, if PB7 sama dengan 1, PB4 kamu jadikan dia sebagai output. Eh, sorry. <coughs> okay, kamu jadikan dia sebagai. Okay, kalau 1, jadikan dia sebagai input. If kosong, kamu jadikan dia sebagai output. Okay, so macam mana nak buat? Okay, lagi. Okay. Mula-mula, kita include this file here. Hashtag include avr slash io dot h okay include dulu file ni okay and then start with our main program okay open clear bracket and close clear bracket okay now <coughs> Sorry. Okay, first kita nak initialize PB7 supaya PB7 become input port. So macam mana nak buat? Okay, so DDRB sama dengan 0B. Okay, yang ni jadikan kosong. Yang lain kamu letak 1 dulu. 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay, and then port B sama dengan kosong B, 1, kosong, 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 kosong. This is to initialize, uh, enable your punya pull up register dekat PB7. Okay, then while one, okay, this masa monitor lah. Kita akan monitor continuously. Okay, if pin B sama dengan, sama dengan 0B, Satu ya. Satu kosong 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 kosong. Okay. If it's equal to one. PB7 sama dengan satu. So what happen? When PB7 sama dengan satu. Kamu nak jadikan PB4 sebagai input port. Okay. Macam mana nak jadikan dia input? DDRB kena set dia sebagai kosong. Okay. So that's why. Apa yang dibuat kat sini ialah DDRB sama dengan DDRB. Okay, kenapa buat macam ni? Sebab kita tak nak ubah value yang lain. Kita nak ubah value dekat PB4 sahaja. Okay. And kan dengan 
0111111111 Oh sorry Kosong PB4 ya Dik sebab PB4 And 1111 Okay so apa yang berlaku Okay DDRP kita Dik sebab DDRP Value 0111111111 Okay sekarang ni sebab pin B kita 1 Okay, PP7 sama dengan 1. Kita nak jadikan PB4. <coughs> D is your PB4. Nak jadikan dia sebagai kosong. You target kat sini jadi kosong. The rest akan follow balik semula lah. So, what happen here is kamu end kan this one here dengan 1, 1, 1, 0. 1, 1, 1, 1. So, you do the logical end. Kamu nampak yang ni akan jadi kosong. Yang lain akan follow the previous punya Value. Okay. So, hanya yang ni je berubah. Yang lain masih sama. So, else. Kalau tak. Okay. Again. DDRB. Sama dengan DDRB. Okay. Sebabnya. Kalau dia kosong. Kamu nak jadikan dia sebagai output. So, what output is one lah. Okay. Kalau one. Kita nak set. Kita kena buat logical. Or. Okay, so this is the value sebelum ni kosong kosong sorry initial value kosong satu 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 so yang ni kamu nak jadikan dia sebagai satu okay yang lain tak berubah macam mana nak buat kita kena buat logical or dengan apa kosong 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 satu kosong 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 when you do the logical or yang ni tak berubah yang ni maintain tak berubah and this also tak berubah so yang ni akan jadi satu ok so else d d r b sama dengan kosong b kosong 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 satu kosong 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 ok and then close screen back here and this is the program <coughs> Okay, any question? Okay, this is another example lah. So, this example saya rasa kamu boleh tengok sendiri nanti apa yang dia buat. Okay, there is a, the explanation here. Okay, what this uh, each of the line do. Okay, ada soalan tak? Before we go to the MRC time delay. And then after that, we stop our class. Okay, the rest nanti saya akan bagi kamu tengok video. Doktor. Ya saya. Bagi tadi yang itu seven segment punya, uh, doktor uh -huh. hanya jelaskan pakai itu C language kan. Boleh jelaskan dengan itu apa? Uh, assembly language tak? Oh assembly language eh? Ah ya. Yeah. Okay, contoh kalau assembly language pun sama juga. Okay, for example this one ya, yeah. saya ambil yang this one. Okay, thank you doktor. Okay, so saya ambil satu contoh ya, this one ya. Okay, you're going to send, you're going to display nombor satu pada kamu punya. Uh, seven segment, but now using assembly language. Okay, how to do that? Okay, mula-mula. Uh, sorry, sorry, doktor. Yang ha. itu sequence, ah, uh, yang itu continuous dari kosong sampai sembilan punya. Oh, kosong sampai sembilan ya? Ah, ya, ya. Okay, kosong sampai sembilan. Okay, this one lah. Ah, yeah. Okay, boleh. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, so now, okay, this by using the assembly language. Oh, sebab yang ni dia ada ni. Okay, sekejap. Uh, you nak pakai yang belakang punya ke ataupun uh, based on this one here? This program here? Uh, Dua-dua boleh, Doktor. Okay, so saya tunjuk yang mudah lah. Yang paling mudah sekali. Which okay, is boleh. kita hantar one by one. Okay, okay, boleh. Thank you. Sama dengan kita punya C programming ni. Okay. Okay, untuk assembly. Okay, mula-mula apa kamu kena buat is first kita kena dot include. Okay, this is the first thing that you need to do lah. Include m32 def dot I and C. 
Okay, so you need to include this file. Okay, it is equivalent to include avr slash io dot t. Okay, but in assembly language, okay, we doesn't have this delay function. Okay, kita tak ada delay function. Okay, all the function we need to generate by ourselves. Okay, we need to do a programming to generate a certain delay. Okay, untuk C programming, kita ada uh, delay function to generate a certain delay. But in assembly, we need to do our own code in order to generate a certain delay. Okay, so now we start with integer main void. Okay, so this one here, we start with, okay, DDRB OXFS. So what this things do, DDRB OXFS. Okay, so yang ni kita nak initialize port B as a output port. So macam mana nak initialize port B as output port? Load IR16 OXFF and then out port B R16. Okay, so this is port B sama dengan output. <coughs> okay, next. Okay, now this one here, this is the value that you're going to send out lah dekat kamu punya port B. Okay, and then call a certain delay. Okay, so let's I put something like this. Okay, load I. Okay, mula-mula I need to load this value dahulu. 3F. Okay, load I R17 O at 3F and then send out Okay, salah ni. This one is salah ni. Not out port B. Out DDRB. Sorry. DDRB. Sebab kita nak initialize port B as output, we need to put it at the DDRB lah. So, out this one port B. So, now I'm going to send D3F to port B so that uh, value kosong akan display pada kita punya 7 segment display. Okay, so R17. So, what happened here? So, kosong will be displayed at your 7 segment display. Okay, then call delay. Okay, so kat bawah ni nanti saya akan ada delay punya subroutine lah. Okay, to generate a certain delay. So, ada programming dia dah bawah ni. So, I tak tunjuk lah how to generate a certain delay. Okay, I just use the delay to, to generate this delay here. Okay, and then after that, load I, R17, and then OX. Okay, nombor satu, which is 06, 06, and then out port B, R17. So now it will display number 1, and then call again, delay. So I will do it until this number here. Nombor 9. Load I R17 OX6F out port B R17 which is this will display number 9. Okay. Then call again delay. Sorry. Uh, call. Kena ada call dulu. Okay, and then call delay. And since I'm going to do this uh, counting forever, continuously, so what I'm going to do here is I use a jump instruction. Okay, so I put a ulang. Where I'm going to put this label ulang, saya so akan letak kat sini lah. Ulang. So, dia akan start balik. Letak kosong, do a counting zero, one, two, three, until nine, and then it will keep repeating until kita stop. Okay, so this is how you're going to write if you're going to use the assembly language. Okay, so this is a similar to this one lah. Kita hantar line by line, satu, one by one. Satu nombor by satu nombor. Okay, and then for this one here, Okay, so yang ni, untuk yang ni dia pakai 
program memory. Okay, so dia simpan this value. Okay, 3F 06 5B D is for, actually untuk 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Dia simpan this thing here inside of the program memory. Okay, and then by using this uh, what we call here pointer register, you see they load, load from program memory, LPM R18Z. Okay, so Z ni akan point to the first sequence, sorry. Okay, Z ni Okay, Z akan point to the first sequence is in the program memory. Okay, this number. Okay, output B R18. And then increment ZL. ZL now point to this address, uh, this memory, uh, program memory. Decrement R17. R17 ni kamu punya counter lah. Sebab kamu nak buat berapa kali ni? 10 kali. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You have a total of 10. 10 counters. Okay, daripada 0 sampai 10. <coughs> okay, and then after that, what happened? Okay, since R17 masih lagi tak sama dengan kosong, dia akan pergi semula ke ulang, load balik semula R18. So, sekarang ni R18 ada nombor ni. Hantar ke port B. So, di display nombor 1. Increment ZL. ZL sekarang point to this address. And this one will keep repeating until R17 sama dengan kosong. When R17 sama dengan kosong, okay, dia akan pergi R jump semula. Dia pergi ke semula and then dia letak balik Pointer Z pointer register sebab sekarang ni your Z pointer register now pointed to this address which is okay next kita kena start dengan kosong semula betul tak so we need to reset so that the Z point to this address so how to do that okay we need to initialize balik lah so that the Z pointer point to this address so this is how you going to reset so that the Z pointer point to initialize the start address inside of the Program memory. Okay, boleh ya? Ah, boleh, boleh. Thank you, doctor. Okay, okay. <coughs> okay, ada dedek, ada soalan lain tak? Selain tu? So, oh, contoh lah, if in the final exam or in the test okay kalau contoh soalan untuk county sequence ni okay kalau kamu tak reti nak guna uh, apa ni array or you you uh, don't know how to use a for loop okay so better you use a ni je lah okay send line by line okay satu by satu tapi panjang lah okay the way the programming is quite longer compare if you use the array ataupun for loops. Untuk soalan macam ni lah ya. Alright. If no question then we go to the ABRC time delay. Okay. So time delay macam mana kita nak generate time delay dekat ABR. There are three way to create a time delay in ABR. One by using a simple for loops. Okay. Satu kita guna simple for loops saja predefined C function. Okay, so the predefined C function yang kita banyak guna ke atas tadi, yang underscore delay, underscore ms, blah, 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 blah. No? And then AVR timers. Okay, so this one here, you will learn in the module 12 ke module 11. Okay, in the next module, how to generate a delay by using AVR timer. Okay, for the simple loop, Okay, so this is a uh, example lah. Okay, how to generate a time delay by using a simple loop. Okay, in which you create a four loops. Okay, so this delay here named delay 100 millisecond. Okay, either this value is correct or not. I don't know. Don't know lah. Okay, because by using a four loop, kamu kena kira. Okay, dia punya... Each of this line will generate how many seconds and then you need to determine what are the value that you need to put here. Okay, so that is the, the what we call here, the drawback of using a loops lah. Okay, to generate a delay because you cannot 
Generate a delay The exact delay Kamu hanya boleh dapat uh, Rough value je lah Rough delay Contoh kalau kamu nak generate 100 millisecond Mungkin yang this one not exactly 100 millisecond Mungkin it will con uh, Generate a 110 milliseconds ke Ataupun 90 millisecond delay Not exactly at 100 millisecond Okay So this is how you going to generate by using a for loop Okay, first you name your subroutine delay Void delay 100 milliseconds So this is your delay name lah Delay 100 millisecond void And then You declare your integer Okay, int Kenapa dia pakai int Because this is a 16 bit Okay, dia nak jadikan dia 16 bit Sebab nombor dia besar Okay, kalau kamu pakai 8 bit Tak cukup Okay, so It use the 16 bit Okay, and that's for 1 equal to 0 I less than 4 to 1 5 0 I plus plus And this one will keep Repeating lah until four to one, four nine. Okay, and then so what happened here is this is your main program. Okay, you start uh, initialize your port B as our output. Okay, under while loop. Okay, this will then continuously port B sama dengan O X A A. Okay, so kamu akan tar A A kepada port B and then call a delay. So dia akan lompat pergi sini and generate this delay here. And then after that, after it finish generate a delay and then it will go back to do this thing here Port B sama dengan OX55 Okay, bit list means that you going to do a toggle lah Dekat kamu punya port B punya output And then after that you go back to this uh, subroutine And generate the delay and when finish you will return And keep repeating the same process Okay, this is by using the for loop to generate a certain delay Okay, the drawback by using a for loop, you cannot get the exact amount of delay you're going to generate. Okay, then we have the function. Okay, the P using a C function. Okay, the predefined function in the C uh, program. Okay, which is you can use the util slash delay dot h. Okay, to generate a delay two millisecond. Okay, you just simply put the underscore delay underscore ms and put 2000 here okay 2000 equal to 2 millisecond delay <coughs> okay if you going to generate a 1 millisecond delay then you you simply replace the value inside here lah put 1000 okay so you can uh, uh, you can choose the appropriate uh, You can select the value According to the delay That you're going to generate Okay So this is by using the Predefined C Library Okay The other one by using the AVR timers That one you will learn in the next module Okay yang tu paling betul-betul lah Yang generate the exact Delay yang kamu nak cari Okay, by using the ABR timer punch, uh, timer. Okay, so below are a few problems that related to Atmega 32 IO. Okay, one of them is IO are scars. Kenapa scars? Sebab kita ada hanya 32 input, input output. What happen if all the 32 input output port already been used? So what are we going to do? Is it we going to buy a new one? A, a new chip ataupun is it we need to to do some modification okay the the best solution here is to do some modi a modification okay so if you going to buy a new one maybe lah not enough time to buy a micro p with more ios because your due date is around the corner so nak beli a new microprocessor will take time so why not we just modify the microprocessor we have and uh, expand the number of input output Okay, so required model Not readily available So this is uh, the, the problems lah Okay, if the uh, I.O. If not enough enough, Okay, compatibility issue Especially using assembly language Or simply no budget Because the micro P with a bigger I.O. Okay, the uh, the the value will be more expensive compared to the macro P with a less input output ports. 
Okay, so what is the solution? By using the MSI devices. Okay, you can simply increase the number of input, increase the number of the output by using MSI. Okay, medium scale integrated circuit sama ada kamu nak guna lash ataupun kamu nak guna buffer. Okay, so I think I stop here. Okay, so this MSI device, I will give you a pre-recorded video. Okay, you can learn, okay, you can watch that video on how to increase the number of input and number of output by using a certain MSI devices. Okay, any question up until here? Ada soalan tak? <coughs> okay, tak ada. If tak ada, okay, thank you class. I'll see you in the next meeting. Okay, semua dah sign attendance ke?